All right, guys. So <laughs> this is that Anna Navarro lady talking about mass shootings. She says, would be nice if Republicans were as worked up and passionate about reforming gun laws to curb mass shootings as they were about MLB moving the venue for a ball game. Sigh. So she's talking about Republicans and mass shootings. To say Republicans and mass shootings in the same sentence should be criminal. When 90% of the mass shooters are suspected Biden supporters. 90% of the mass shootings take place in democratically run districts, cities, towns, municipalities. The fact that she could get on here and chide, chastise, land base, ridicule. Republicans about some god darn mass shootings is absolutely criminal. And nobody's covered mass shootings on YouTube like we have here. And I'll be doing a video on this Georgia voting law tomorrow. And this whole crap going on down in Georgia about the black people don't have no IDs crap. Even though I already did that video, but I'm going to do another video um, tomorrow about that. So be on the lookout for that. Um, today is Easter, so I'm just doing this one for... Um, for my um I'm just doing this one this today's Easter so I'm just doing I'm just doing this one for my fans because you know I was out with the wife and I spent a lot of family time today so I didn't have time to really you know do what I usually do make my videos so I'm just doing this one you know just to give y'all some news but it's interesting how everyone talks about mass shootings. Then you have guys like this guy. Representative Jason Crow. Atlanta, Boulder, now Orange County. Three mass shootings in three weeks. <laughs> three mass shootings in three weeks. Dude, there's a mass shooting every day. But you know what? No one cares because the victims are black and the shooters are black and this guy this liberal he definitely doesn't give a crap about no damn shooting where it's a black victim or a black shooter and it's just the same that people think that Atlanta Boulder and Orange County are the only mass shootings <laughs> it's so sad man three are dead after a mass shooting interrupted a private party overnight. We have WECT Zach Solon live at the scene. He spoke to authorities early this morning. Zach, have they found the person responsible for this? Not yet, Cassie. Wilmington Police Chief Donnie Williams tells me they do not have any suspects at this time, but they are still searching and gathering evidence here into the early hours of the morning. This mass shooting happened. Name me. The mass shooting done by a white boy in or in a Republican district, somewhere out there in Texas, somewhere, or whatever, Wyoming, or one of them red states. Where did that? We just can't find the guy. Because this is the case in the majority of mass shootings in black districts like this one. Uh, we can't find the guy. And there's no national manhunt. CNN doesn't have their profiles up and we got to find this guy. We can't find him. 
Cassie, Wilmington Police Chief Donnie Williams tells me they do not have any suspects at this time, but they are still searching and gathering evidence here into the early hours of the morning. This mass shooting happened right after midnight tonight. Let me give you a little timeline of what happened here so far this morning at the corner of 7th and Kidder Streets here in Wilmington. Police responded here around midnight to an active shooting scene. Seven people have been shot, three pronounced dead after being taken to the hospital. Chief Williams says there was a house party taking place, a private one, when something went wrong and somebody started shooting. Police say the scene is safe at this time and that the public is not in any immediate danger. When I spoke to the chief around 2 o'clock this morning, he told me they do not know the motive for the shooting at this time. The scene has been under control for about an hour. Um, we feel that this is an isolated um, incident. I've never listen. Well, listen. In movies, the black the police chief's always black. So I guess <laughs> on TV shows, the police chief always black. So I mean, I shouldn't be shot. But I'm never s surprised when I see that the city has a black police chief. I don't care how big it is. I don't care if it's Philadelphia, Chicago, Atlanta, D.C. I don't care where it is. Or some little podunk town like Wilmington, home of Michael Jordan. But you're ne in this racist country where black folks is being chased across the countryside with pitchforks and torches by white supremacists, and you can't even go for a jog. Every goddamn city we do, the police chief is black. Scene has been under control for about an hour. Um, we feel that this is an isolated um, incident relating to this party. The public is not in harm's way, and we're going to start the investigation and try to bring justice for the families involved here. And police are continuing to work gathering evidence here with detectives into the early hours of the morning as we still learn more about the shooting. Of course, this is a developing story. We will continue to update you on air and online at WECT.com as we continue to learn more details. Certainly a scary moment in Wilmington this morning for all of those involved. Like we said, three dead, four others injured at least that we know of. And like we said, we will continue to follow this story. But for now, Cassie, I will send it back to you. All right, thank you, Zach. We'll check back over, see you, and then check in on that scene later on at 1. Okay, so police have released the names of the victims. Give me a race on these victims. 22-year-old Zaya Wade. I know it ain't that, Zaya. 22-year-old Zaya Wade. 21-year-old Shamir Jones, 16-year-old female whose name is being withheld due to her age. Those are the three that are dead. Shot Keyshawn James. <laughs> if you find a white person with any of these names, that's cultural appropriation. If 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 wearing box braids or having cornrows is cultural appropriation, this is definitely cultural appropriation for a white person to have any of these names. Zakaria Crawford, Valerie Orlius, Orlus, okay, that's a good one, Valerie, and Zymerion, <laughs> Zymerion Atkins. Those four survived. This is the terror these Negroes leave behind. And this isn't domestic terrorism. This They just started calling this a mass shooting. But this isn't noteworthy. This isn't worthy of the national news. A few neighbors, Leary at first, came out to assess what had happened on their block of Kidder Street between 7th and 8th Streets. Just after midnight, many of them were hunkered down for safety. One put her granddaughter in a bathtub. Imagine having to throw the kids in the bathtub. Because presumably bullets, even though they can fly through drywall and siding and wood studs, 
presumably and, and oftentimes they they're stopped by the ceramic or the um that 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 makes up i forgot what kind of material that is makes up bathtubs but bathtubs are very very um you know good for stopping bullets but imagine having to throw the children it's that many bullets that you got time think about that though you have time to get the kids in the bathroom and throw them in the bathtub. <laughs> it ain't just pa 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 pa. I mean it's <laughs> So one grand one 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 um, woman put her granddaughter in the bathtub, then came a whale of gunfire in various directions aimed at a party in the house deemed by one neighbor as a kind of club for young people. I saw everything as it ha was happening, said another neighbor. Then my son said, oh my God, they have guns. And this is how it don't take a lot of these savages to ruin your neighborhood. Look at this. The neighbor said they've lived on the block for more than a year and said people are pretty tight knit and it's relatively quiet. But in recent weeks, the nearby home was seeing more activity than usual. <laughs> One house on the block. When I seen it, I seen a, a quiet neighborhood destroyed by one woman and her brood. Section eight. One woman and her brood move on the block and it destroys the whole culture. I seen it. And I wish I could say, I've seen uh, a, a, a wife and a husband and their kids come destroy a day, but I haven't seen it. But I've seen a woman and her brood come on the block and destroy it. Good morning to you, welcome back. We want you to see this dramatic carjacking attempt in Southeast Atlanta right here. Now look at the video here. Now watch in the top corner, you see a man in, in black standing near the 82 year old victim who has just finished pumping gas here. You see the victim dressed in a plaid shirt, put his hands up and police say the robber pulled out a gun. He opens the driver's door and tries to snatch his keys. But look here, the 82 year old quickly turns around to get his keys back and starts fighting to the ground. The attacker couldn't get the car to start, so he then runs away. This happened at the Chevron on McDonough Boulevard in Southeast Atlanta on March 11th, and police are still looking for that guy. Three minutes of my life. Three minutes, my whole world was turned upside down, and I don't know why. Brian and Julie Everly were supposed to be celebrating their seventh wedding anniversary in Hilton Head, South Carolina. Instead, he's planning her funeral, and along with a couple six children, mourning the loss of a wife and mother. There's a lot of numbness. There's a lot of... Um, just raw emotion. You know, she just loved being around her family and friends and, and sharing um, our blessings. Their life together ended on I-95 in Robinson County, North Carolina, near the border with South Carolina last Thursday morning in what police describe as a road rage killing. I changed lanes and, and a car was coming behind me. I didn't see that he was going around me um, and I, I pushed him to the shoulder and mistakenly. Uh, as soon as I was able, I gave him room to get back on the highway. No, no car contact, no nothing. But moments later, the vehicle investigators describe as a silver Chevy Malibu came back around. So I saw in my mirror that he was passing us to the right, and um, gunshots were fired, and our car was hit. You know, my wife yelled my name, and I asked if she was if she was hit, and she said yes. And Homicide detectives are looking through surveillance video and talking with witnesses to find the shooter. I need, as a husband, to do everything in my physical power to do whatever I can to bring her justice. In Manheim, Barbara Barr, WGAL News 8. Wow, look at that beautiful family. Six kids. I'm sure it's a blended family. They've only been married for seven years. Um... Yeesh. When I heard this story, it just tore me up. Because as you know, I had an incident a few weeks ago. I spoke about this on another video. 
um, I was in Pennsylvania and um, something similar. I didn't even, I didn't push the guy onto the shoulder. I just I was getting off the exit and we, you know when you get off of a, off the highway onto the exit and you appear um, into whatever town it is and then there's a light right there at the end of the exit. The sign said you have to go to the left and there was no right turn. So I was in the center lane. So I was like, oh, shit, I got to get over to the left lane. So I tried to get over to the left, and I seen a car coming up in that lane. So I moved back. I dipped into that lane, like just the tip of my car, the, of, the, of the front dr driver's side. And then I dipped back into my lane and let them go. But, the, but when we got to the light, I'm in, I'm in the, the first car in my lane at the light, and there's another car beside me in the car that I guess I dipped in their lane in front of them was the second car in the le in the left lane so i'm beside another car and then there's a car behind me that guys got beef with me so they start yelling all this crazy gangster shit out the window Motherfucker, I, 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 I mean wolf and i'm talking got the window down they hanging out the window and at first i wasn't even like like aware that they was talking to me because like, that type of shit is reserved for, like, fender benders or some shit or some shit like, like, accidents or some shit. Like, we didn't even come close to touching, but, like, I seen them and I moved. Like, I could have not, I could have, like, not seen them. They hanging out the window. My wife's like, and she see me, like, about to say something. And then she's like, don't say nothing, don't say nothing. Please don't say anything, please don't say anything. I'm looking at my daughter, and I was like, shit, we got a baby in the car, so I ain't say nothing. So I rolled down the window, and I looked back at him, and then, motherfucker, what, bitch ass nigga, roll the, roll the, roll the, roll the. hanging, I'm, I'm hanging out the window, I'm like, <laughs> so then, my wife was like, make a right, make a right, so when the light changed, I made a right, and they made a left, because they was in the left lane, and, um, but I know how niggas act on the road. But I wonder, I want to know who you guys think did this. I want to know who you guys think shattered this whole family's world. Officers took 29-year-old Dejuan Floyd into custody outside his apartment in Lumberton, North Carolina. He's charged with the murder of Julie Everly of Mannheim. We had him under surveillance for quite some time. Uh, it actually began yesterday afternoon. Witnesses and surveillance video identified the car involved in the road rage killing on I-95 last Thursday morning and led police to Floyd. But we were able to put it together. Uh, video footage from dozens and dozens of uh, businesses and homeowners. The vehicle got off the exit uh, 20. Here's part of a 911 call from one eyewitness moments after the shooting. What color was it? Gray Chevy Malibu. Gray Chevy Malibu. You gotta hurry up because it fired shots in that truck and I'm not sure if somebody's hit. But having a guy like this on the road that would take a non I mean non contact swerving like I was driving on the highway today, 495, actually the beltway. And things happened, man. It was it was so much, so much um, traffic on 495 because there was so many accidents. But things happened. But a guy that'll pull up beside a car after a non-contact swerving like incident, like you swerve and you actually make a mistake, and they pull up and just fire shots into your car. Sorry, black community. You don't want that guy on the streets. I know she talking to the feds and it's too many black men in jail. Well, they decriminalized marijuana. So, I mean, what you want to do now? Decriminalize shooting into people's cars? Eyewitness moments after the shooting. What color was it? Gray Chevy Malibu. Gray Chevy Malibu. You gotta hurry up because it fired shots in that truck, and I'm not sure if somebody's hit. One shot struck and killed Julie, a mother to six children. 
Ryan told us his SUV and the Chevy nearly came in contact during a lane change. The Everleys were on their way to Hilton Head to celebrate their wedding anniversary. In America, you should be able to travel the nation's highways without worry that somebody is going to shoot in your car, even if you made a little traffic boo-boo. The sheriff says the tragedy struck a chord in the community. I'm proud of my county uh, stepping forward to help the, uh, the Everly family. Among all the tips that came in, the sheriff says one person will collect the $20,000 reward money. In Lancaster County, Barbara Bar, WGAL News 8. So let's take a trip to the gun memorial. Let's see who's being killed in this country. Now this is just the gun memorial for the whole country. Damn. I mean, just look at who's being killed in this country. It's a lot of sisters. God, dog. But just look at who's being killed in this country. Even the ones where they don't have a picture, you can just look. DeJounte Kennedy. Darrell Lavin Smith, Francisco Zamora. You can, I mean, even, even if you don't have a picture, you can still tell. Look at this. George Evans III. Kiosha Ferguson. So you don't even need a picture. You can tell who's being killed in this country by guns. Twelve percent of the population is making up eighty percent of the gun memorial. And no one <laughs> sees a problem with this. And then even when we see a white person on here, they may have been killed by a black person. I mean, you got to literally <laughs> I'm trying to get himself together and it was I loved him. He was my son and he was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. A father mourning the death of his son. Sylvester Day Jr. died Sunday, shot and killed moments after calling and saying he was stopping at this Royal Farm store on his way home. It was devastating for me because I had left, went to church that morning, and they don't detour me to take 702 instead of going the way I used to go straight up past the farm store. And I never knew then that my son was laying there on that floor, you know, had been shot. He found out later that detectives had come to his house. I'm not calm at all. I'm, 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 burst, I'm about to burst open inside. Baltimore County Police released new details about their investigation involving multiple crime scenes and the murders of four people. Frankly, all of us have more questions than answers about the events that occurred yesterday. Please know that our investigators will continue to work tirelessly to investigate this incident. Police say Sunday morning, 27-year-old Joshua Green came to the store on Middle Barrow Road in Essex, blocked a car on the parking lot, went to a window and shot 62-year-old Alpha Smith, 
she died in her car. Green then walked into the store where he killed Sylvester Day Jr. and shot a 22-year-old cashier who survived. Police say Green went to his apartment on Shade Tree Road, set it on fire, walked outside, and killed himself. Hours later, police found the bodies of Green's parents, 58-year-old Douglas and 62-year-old Olivia Green, in the garage of their home on Manor Road in Phoenix. Police and the county executive are calling this a senseless tragedy. My deepest condolences go out to the families of everyone who lost a loved one yesterday. And my prayer goes to the injured employee for a swift and full recovery. Investigators don't know why Green shot his parents and then targeted the store. They say he owned the gun he used. The gun was, in fact, registered to him. It was a legal purchase, and and I would be speculating. No, actually, the purchase was uh, in 2020. One victim, Alpha Smith, was a cashier at the nearby Food Lion grocery store. A neighbor says donations are being accepted to try to help her family. And we did contact Royal Farms about the shooting. A spokeswoman says the company does not have a comment at this time. Reporting from Essex, Barry Sims, WBAL-TV, 11 News. Maryland man shoots dead his parents at their home and two more at a convenience store before setting his own apartment on fire and taking his own life. I know y'all heard about this, right? Four people were murdered. That's a mass shooting. Joshua Green. Wow, he got the same last name as our friend from the um from the Capitol. A Maryland man, 27, shot dead two people at a convenience store and killed his parents at their home before setting his own apartment on fire and taking his own life. Joshua Green, 27, is accused of shooting dead four people, including his parents, in a killing spree in Maryland on Sunday. Who heard of this? How many of y'all heard of this last Sunday? There was a shooting spree in Maryland. The victims have been identified as Douglas Green, 58, Olivia Green, 62, who are his parents, as well as Alpha Smith, 62, and 43-year-old Sylvester Day Jr., both Royal Farms customers. So he went into Royal Farms and just killed two random customers. So this brother <laughs> just rolled up in the Royal Farms, shot the brother on the left, and then shot that woman. What happened to Black Lives Matter? I thought it's Black Lives Matter. If you gonna go out like this, <laughs> Why you shoot two black people? Why you just take these, snatch these two black people's lives? And I got the, and I can't make videos. I gotta watch what I say about niggas and videos. So you commenters don't get upset. But if a nigga get mad, he just gonna go start snatching black folks' lives. These two people should still be here, like y'all say about George Floyd, right? He should still be here. Well, these two should still be here. And I bet they wasn't taking as long in the store as George Floyd was. Police say he shot and killed Alpha Elizabeth, 
who was sitting inside her car outside the store. Police Chief Melissa Hyatt said Green drove to the Royal Farms and used his car to intentionally block in a woman who was sitting in her car. He then walked, went to the woman's window and shot her and killed her. She has been identified as Alpha Smith, 62. Police say Green then walked into the Royal Farms and approached the register where he shot 43-year-old Sylvester Day Jr., a store customer, killing him before turning the gun to a 22-year-old employee, Joshua Robinson, who was shot in the leg. He is now in stable condition. Detectives said Green left the store, set his apartment on fire. Police said the officers later found his body outside his apartment complex saying he died of a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Detectives went to the Phoenix area home of Green's parents to identify him as the next of kin where they were found to the two deceased. Mm, mm, mm. Wow. Wow. How many of y'all heard about that? Who knew? Make sure you like, subscribe, donate, hit that PayPal, hit that Cash App, hit that Super Chat. Who knew? How, how would you know? Get in the comment section. Peace. I'm out.